somewhat legendary podcast. Top of the morning to you, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Somewhat Legendary Podcast, baby. He's your boy, Prince Evan. I love the smell of late come in the morning. And he's your boy, Iris J. Swindle. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. We're getting a lot better at that now that we kind of figured out a format. Yeah, we got to stick with it. You would think after 30 shows, we would finally start to be good at something that really only involves about 20 words or so. (laughs) (laughs) Not too much timing going back and forth. And every time it's different. Every time it is different. Every time it's different. Speaking of timing, we got a guest today that uh, knows a thing or two about timing. Yes, he does. Uh, He's amazing. But not yet, not yet. I wanted to ask you, what's going on in the news, Prince Evan? Well, there was this thing that happened. Oh, the... Hey, good afternoon, boys. Well, Joey, if you wouldn't mind, can you introduce yourself to our listeners and we'll get started because I know you're busy. My name is Joey Belladonna. I'm the lead singer from Anthrax. Thank you so much for calling in, man. This is an honor. Where are you calling? Where am I calling? Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. First, uh, we wanted to tell you, we just found out about your tour manager and your sound man, Aaron Dilks, passing away. Wanted to send our condolences to you. Very sorry. And the that. band. Yeah, thank you very much. That's uh, sad, sad stuff, you know. You know, like hearing any of that kind of thing. And it's too bad, you know. It really is. We definitely feel for you guys. We know what that's like. Having we we've been in bands ourselves, and you, you know you got the crew, and they, they become friends, and they become like family, and it's it's a tough situation. But we we did want to pass along our condolences before we got started. Well, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. We all appreciate it. You know? Awesome, man. Awesome. I mean, I remember back when I was a kid, uh, back when when I first heard Anthrax, and. I was a bit of an outsider and, you know, wearing the heavy metal shirts and stuff like that. And I, I can't tell you how many days uh, and nights you got me through where I just, you know, I would just sit down and just listen to music and just listen to you guys and the, the lyrics that, that you that you uh, that you sang. And, and just it, it just took you away to a different place. And that's that's one of the great things about music. So, you know, as, as a huge fan, I just wanted to thank you for that and all the sacrifices you guys make every day and put everything into it, man. So, oh, yeah. You know, that's a good thing. Thank you, because that's uh, kind of what I get from you. If I like something and I get a good vibe from it, it makes you feel real good about things, you know, it kind of puts you in a different place, you know. Right. Right. And you guys, uh, you guys, oh, Anthrax actually uh, just played some shows. How did those shows go for you? Oh, great. Well, Volby, you know, the very cool band. They're a good bunch of guys. and We're friends, you know, at this point, you know. We've been close for years touring in Europe and stuff, and course, Rob plays in the band, Rob Caggiano's and the lead, lead guitar player now. Yeah, it was a good tour. It was really great. We had a smooth run, different crowds, different different people to, to see on this run, you know. Right, right. That's awesome. Very cool. Now, um, obviously, uh, Anthrax is part of the big four, and I know you got some other stuff going on, which I, w- I want to talk about as well. I just want to ask you, back in the day, when you and I know you guys were friends, was there like competition to be the best, or was it just you guys were friends and you just raised each other's levels naturally? Yeah, I don't. I mean, for, speaking for myself, I don't really. I don't try to compete with anybody. You know, I, cause I, I come to the conclusion, you know, you just really do your thing, be good at what you do, and uh, let that let that be the way it is. Because that's the cool thing about being in different bands. You know, everybody's got their own style, different taste, different you know approach to the songs and sound and all that kind of stuff. So you just kind of follow that. You know, I, I'm sure they're you know. Bands have their their ways of being competitive, you know, trying to be competitive. But I don't think it was anything that we would really focus on so much, you know. Right, sure. Well, I can tell you, for for me personally, just the combination of your voice and and the rhythms that the band came up with, there was nothing. You guys are the most danceable band. Yes. I mean, the the mosh By pits. Far. We talked to Spike from DRI. Uh, a couple weeks ago and we were just talking about the older days of the shows and it was just amazing there was some insane crazy things that used to happen and you guys have always been at the forefront of that and just creating a different style and and i think a lot of that is it would be attributed to your vocal stylings do you have vocal training i mean it's 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 pretty it sounds like you do so (laughs) i don't actually i really never no because i just i just when i first started i 
I must did a lot of stuff in my own bedroom, you know, I sang the records all the time, but that was like my solitary for me. It was like, you know, I'd be in my room and I listened to cool cool bands and picked up on all kinds of cool styles and I uh, just had a way of like following that that part of music and really just turned into me singing. I don't know. I never really did I, you know, I didn't take any lessons or anything like that. Wow, that's yeah, that's, that's super. Imp- I mean, you sound like a operatically trained singer. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Again, I, I think you know, there's certain certain people uh, that they have uh, a knack for a style. I mean, that's the hard thing is trying to find your own originality, and that's I think I have that, and I just kind of roll with it that way, you know. And I don't, it's hard to describe, really. I don't know what it is with the vocals. You know? Again, I think it's a feel. You got to have a good feel about it, and you got to have. You know, and then approach it with the best intentions, you know. I, I don't know. I like to be clear, obviously, at least for me. Sometimes maybe I was a little too clean for everybody. I mean, look at the times where Anthrax didn't feel I was right for their band, which was shocking to me, you know, because I thought we had a cool thing. And obviously you can see we've been carrying on now and it's like nothing. So you, you get confused on what, what I used to do and how it wasn't right at one time, you know, for them. Well, Joey, I, I want to... I actually did want to talk to you about that. I, I didn't want to bring it up, but I can tell you from the yeah, fans. I, 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 I try not to, but you know, <laughs> it's, so, it's such a loud thing to me. It kind of it well, goes with what the hell, you know? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, and I oh, can yeah. tell you from the fans' perspective, every single person I know was also shocked by that, and it wasn't Anthrax without Belladonna. No. The combination of those four guys, your voice... I mean, you've got one of the best voices around, and it it wasn't it wasn't Anthrax with yeah, Belladonna. It was four other dudes without and Belladonna. Some other dude. Yeah, it it really. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, Scott Ian and Charlie. I mean, those guys they come up with some incredible rhythms and and that kind of thing. But without your voice, it it just wasn't the same, and I did not like it. I'll be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, John Bush is a, is a good singer. You know, Armored Saint. I like, respect him. Yeah, but it just Anthrax is Joey Belladonna and and you know the the crew. I mean, that's it's just. So that, that that was really shocking to us as well. We were really and uh, oh, me too, me too. I mean, I, I I thank you very much for kind words and stuff. And I I just think we had a cool style together. I mean, it was something that was very natural about it. And again, still, even like this week, I'll start cutting more songs on Monday. And you know, it's just a natural thing. It just it kind of flows with the system, you know. And you can't really write it that way. It's I don't I don't go in there with any any anything else but just a feel and a. And a go and do my thing you know and uh unfortunately it sucks that we had to spend 13 years without ever even having a chance to really take that on you know it was a long time it was yeah and and you were missed and and people were calling for you to come back i mean it when you came back it was amazing i don't think they were really i I mean i'm I'm gonna go i don't care what anybody says what they think and what their story was not to go into it but I don't think that they they want they wanted something different. That's all I can tell you. They wanted they wanted something with, with a little bit more of a growl, a grunt, or whatever you may want to call it in the '90s thing. They just they just pushed aside whatever clean and tenor I had, so it just didn't fit. Which to me, you know, whatever you what are you gonna do? You know, I mean, and, that, and, that's the way it is. And I agree with you, Joey. And all that did was make them sound like everyone else at that time. Your, the uniqueness you go, of your vocals right? was what I mean, made that that yeah. band so successful. Yeah, I mean, again, every band has to have some some connection, and some differentials to, to flow with a with a style, you know. And that's kind of what we had. And and right off the bat, I wasn't even sure when I did hear them for the first time where I fit in. And, and when I started hearing the songs come across, and I did study, I was like, wow, this, this works, you know. This is a really this is a cool thing. I could see this uh, taking on something. Me and plus it was something new for me because I've never really had been super original at the point yet. And I finally got to hear myself be someone that I could be, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're uh, you're legendary. You really are, and worldwide. I mean, it's it's just it's so awesome. I, I remember back when I when uh, when you first joined the band right after Neil Turbin. And I, I was playing it for my friends and stuff. It just took over my school. I, people were just wearing anthrax shirts and writing not on everything and not on the chalkboard when the teacher wasn't looking. And it just just to watch you guys grow and become what I knew you were capable of was was amazing. I mean, we were honored to, to and lucky to to have you. Uh, you know, the big four they're great, but the the your vocals are what set you apart from any other band. I mean, I really truly yeah. believe that. And thanks. You know, I, I wonder like we have all those things. Said, you know, as far as I used to follow, 
how you see the band even now, even though it might be different as far as you know who who follows us and stuff. But I still think we have that that vibe still. You know the mm-hmm. whole the whole thing that follows us and, and how you how you see us. Even if you're a new fan, hopefully you can grab on some of that older that that thing we had that that that, that magic. I mean, I think we still have as much of it now. It feels the same to me. If like anything, it feels way better. But it's uh, it feels quite quite the same in, in some ways, in a good way, you know. Absolutely, it stands the test of time for sure. Yeah, definitely, it's timeless. Tell us a little about. You said you're playing with your uh, cover band tonight. Tell us a little bit about that that project. Well, that, you know, that's just a, just a, a good thing for me to get together. And, uh, I mean, most of all, it's really a great thing just to be able to sing different music on my time. You know, whenever I, I mean, other than just not not doing anything. Right. So I enjoy, I enjoy just singing classic rock, and I love all that kind of music, and it's just part of me. And I get to play my drums. You know, I don't get I don't get to play my drums ever. And it's been a while since I actually really played and sang since '79. <laughs> so I get I get a chance to do that, and I get a couple local guys, my friends, you know, that want to play, and they love they love gigging, and we just do it. And it's really that's all. I'm never really trying to make any statement like I'm a new band and I'm off doing something else or I got my own projects and all that kind of stuff, which nothing wrong with all that stuff. But I mean, it really mainly was just to be able to go out and play music, you know, and, and practice and be good at it, you know, and work at it. So that's what it becomes for me. Right. Just something for fun. I take it pretty serious. It's not like... And how's, uh, how's the, how's the, uh, Belladonna band doing? Anything going on? Well, I, I, you know, right now I, I actually put that on a little bit aside. I mean, I have some material I've been writing. You know, I write all the time, and I get together with uh, a couple of new people and, and some of the older people. And you know, there's a there's a little handful of people that want to do stuff. It's just I, I haven't really, you know, doing the aspect stuff, and then I'll do the record. I, I'm kind of like not getting too crazy with it, and plus I don't want to go on the road yet with anything like that because it just would be. Um, uh, kind of redundant in some way because I think I, I'd be having to play more Anthrax stuff if I was to hit the road. But you know, as far as studio stuff and new new songs, original songs, I'd love to be able to do something. You know, I'm not not pushing the issue, but I also have it there because I think it would be cool. It's really you know good metal. It is. I, I, I like that band yeah, a lot. Yeah, me too. I think it's a little more straightforward than Anthrax, so your your vocals stand out maybe a little more. Um, there's there's something different about it that I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's it's great. I really love it a lot. I've been listening to nothing but Anthrax and Belladonna for past couple days. Oh, <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of the stuff you may hear from Belladonna, it's talk about like say, so fast, so quick, almost like in most of his demos. Really, I never probably should call them records. But some of them are ten day projects that, that none of us even rehearsed that and all that kind of stuff. But now at least I'm working on stuff that, you know, might might have a little bit more uh opportunity to take it on a little bit more of a bigger level, you know, hopefully and not to downplay any of it. But yeah, I get you. I mean I'm not gonna be being anthrax. I would never try and never I don't even think of it that way. Right. So sure. yeah, just kinda let it let, let it happen. Whoever I'm writing with and how we feel. I mean, I'm, I'm more straight up. Yeah, I like I like stuff that's a little bit more catchy and not not as as crazy. And then no one's gonna no one's gonna do the anthrax stuff like we do it. I'm never gonna try. So right. And and again, I just I just want to tell you, man, from from the fans, like you you are loved and supported. And a, a lot of people thought it was messed up what what happened there. And you know, and and the Belladonna band too. Like that just goes to show that people love you for who you are so i we, we just want to thank you i've heard nothing but good things about you as well and yeah, you know too, just in our communication that's been that's been true and you know just appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today man oh well, not a problem i, I, I think this uh it's cool you know it's not you know very kind and uh it's uh nice that you reached out to even have the conversation well joey there's one question cool. there's one question i've been okay, dying I, i've just been dying to ask you if there could be a big five, and I'm going to give you some choices so as to not to get you in trouble with anyone. If there could be a big five, which one of these bands would you choose? Testament, Exodus, Overkill, Pantera, Suicidal Tendencies, or Sepultura? Oh, well, you know, it seems like we got some couple, three old school metalers, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> a little newer. Yeah. I mean, obviously Pantera, like if you want to go, are uh, we, uh, we rating people that have been more successful than others. I mean, Pantera would be uh, pretty close to the Sepultura. I don't know their numbers and stuff. 
and I, I don't, I don't, I love all those guys. They're all friends and stuff. So it's hard for me to really. I don't even, even with the anthrax and the and all that stuff. It's hard, I mean, we didn't make up those, those, those four. So I don't know right. who's really. You know, it's not like the Billboard uh, charts where you got stats. Right. And I mean, whether they do the big four because of that, or just because we've been around for a while, and I don't know. It's hard for me to really say any of that kind of stuff. Uh, that could be a whole no- that that could be a whole other uh, bill in itself, right? Right. That could be a whole other show <laughs> yeah, for, sure. Whole other for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I don't. I, I again, with even with the big four, I, don't, I mean, I know what we've done, and I know how the, the shows are perceived, and, and they're really, really uh, a cool thing. And I wish you even do more of them because I think it's a great, great, fun bill, and it could be really uh, successful even now, again, still. And but those bands, I mean, all those guys. Would be great. I mean, God, that would be a cool festival. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> yeah, right. You know, Jay and I just looked at each other like, I mean, they out looking for these festivals. That would be great. If we could just put all, all those bands on one day. That would be spectacular. Yeah, it that sure would. would. That would that would blow the roof off the place, big time. Yeah, other than Pantera, you know, that you know that would be the, the hard one to make happen. But right, sure. All right, I got a question uh, for you. If you could have any superpower, what superpower would you like to have? I don't know, maybe to fly around when I want to fly around so I can get there quicker. <laughs> that's that's the most popular yeah, one. That's what people usually one. say. Yeah, I, not really, is that, but that what it is? Yeah, a lot of people say that. I always say mind control because I just think, like, if you could control people's minds, you could control the whole world. Oh, yeah, yeah, or, like, you could, you know, have, you'd be one step ahead of everybody predicts. Yeah, predict everything, yeah. Right. I know that this is difficult, but if you could rate your top three favorite Belladonna era Anthrax albums, how would you how would you rate the top three? Well, I mean, obviously, the, you know, Spreading Disease is my first record. That was, that was a cool thing. And I mean, Mung Living and Worship Music. Right. You know, those those three. And then, man, just my, my Artifacts 1 and 2 are really the, the stem of anything worth worth anything. You know, that, that was like the beginning of me even doing anything original. And it was uh, awesome to be able to sit there and, and Polly Kirk to sit there and write music all day and, and listen to us come up with songs per day, per song, you know. And, those are the two that I, you know, always hold pretty dear to myself because that was the beginning of doing anything original. I I, I agree. Uh, my my favorite would be uh, Among the Living, but I think State of Euphoria gets overlooked. I love that album. I think it's fun. Yeah, you know it is. I get you there. I mean, it's just something about it. I mean, that one was hard for me because kind of like they pushed it pushed it on me and didn't really have any great opportunities to. Even though I pulled it off and everything, it was just a hard album to to really really make something really really great out of it you know the way i wanted to so it's kind of like stuck yeah i always heard that album was a little rushed yeah it was very i mean yeah it was uh and it was a lot of the songs weren't really easy to uh manipulate and sing because there there, there's some really interesting weird riffs on there and stuff so overall i mean but again i'm glad that the album did what it did i mean i think the guys feel the same way about it but you know what that's what's cool about it you don't know like the new album, you won't even know until you get it out there. You know, um, you can't, you can't even really perceive what's going to happen with it. You know, right? You have a good feeling, way big, way better, and more going on with the newer stuff. And you know, we're there in the middle of it all, and we're working on it. But maybe before you, yeah, yeah well, you know, but that's cool. I, I'm glad that that at least got perceived well. Yeah, I, I, every every time Anthrax released an album, uh, uh, you know, I just think back to like my school days and right after school, it, it, everyone just everyone had it. Like, did you get the new Anthrax? Like, yeah, of course I got the new Anthrax. <laughs> it just went without <laughs> saying. Of course I. Knew <laughs> I can relate, you know, because it's nice when you got somebody that you like and the music that you want to hear, and they put something out, and especially if it lives up to something, you know, most of your expectations. Right, it, you guys. Every time you put out an album, it was a must-have because you knew it was going to deliver, and you guys always did. Yeah, that's great. See? It's awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, were you on? Un- were you unmarried with children? Yeah, we were. I was telling somebody was talking about that the other day. I, I, I was gonna say I just saw that uh, when I was doing some research. I, I never saw that episode, and I used to watch the show sometimes, but I never saw you on there. That's pretty cool. You probably get. You probably could get that on. YouTube yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm I can sure find it. Yeah, I want. I want to look it up for sure. I definitely want to see that. Joey, what are some new bands you're jamming now? Like, I, I'm. You know, a lot, a lot of my list is way off the mark. Totally off the mark. I mean, I'm. I'm still old school. I love all the older classic stuff. And then, yeah, I'll. You know, I can listen to a, 
you know, array of uh, uh, more of a mellower type of stuff. You know, I don't care if it's, you know, Seal or I could listen to Mayor. I could listen to, you know, old bread. I could listen to anything. I'm, I'm so, I listen to such, such wide odd stuff, you know, and then I'll listen to some real progressive jazz kind of, of progressive rock kind of stuff. I don't know, you know, it's just it's something that's got to have a little bit of melodic, uh, cool, cool riffs and stuff. Uh, I love Seven Dust, you know, those guys are a good band. I love that kind of, like, like that style. I like, you know, there's, there's just a lot of stuff out there, you know, it's hard to even, like, go into all of it. But right, sure, there's so much. Sounds like you're a fan of Volbeat, too. Yeah, you know what, they're another new band that's got a whole different twist on you know, the metal, uh, the, I don't even know how to really categorize, you know, but it's hard rock, you know, for sure. Right, you know, right. And they're, they're definitely influenced by you guys, you can see that. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, you know, I'm not even totally certain of that, but I, I think they've listened to us over the years, whether we have any impact on them in, in, a, long, in a long part of it, but it seems like they, they have uh, some stake in what we've done, you know? Right. And that's cool. Um, you know, I'm sure we're listening to them. Not that anybody's even taken anything from it. Is in, is in. I don't. I can't come up with anything around. But <laughs> <Right. I hate laughs> it. like ripping somebody off. Not yeah. that's not happening. But yeah, yeah I just. You know, I don't think you know. I don't. I don't ever think that way myself. I mean, not that I'm saying it uh, can't be influenced. But influence is another thing. You know, I think uh, it's me. It's just whatever. It could be anything. It could be one little part or one idea or one one vibe somebody came across you know but yeah they're i, I just like I, I have my pros and cons with certain things too you know and i just leave that to myself about how, how i like it you know people are pretty critical about about bands too which I try not to get that way but if i don't like something a style i just don't i don't i don't get into it but i don't hate the people with it you know some people take that right out like see you didn't like my book so you know because it was too clean or whatever you know like that's so why i hate that right oh, right it was like but people are weird about that stuff, which is okay. But I mean, that's you know, so I try not to get that harsh about shit. Right, for you sure. Know? And uh, don't listen to it, or I mean, maybe you might like it, or well, maybe you'd be a little considerate, but considerate about it. You know, I don't know. But uh, I, I guess if I don't read it, hear about it, then I don't, I don't get too caught up on what people have to say. Right. Because I mean, I have my own stuff. It's hard to change up. I don't want to change something because somebody prefers another style. That, that, that kind of sucks. To, I mean, good thing, you know, I can sing versus, like, now you hear more of the harder, barker, kind of like a yeah. rally kind of thing. Cookie Monster I vocals. Yeah. That. I'd, be, I'd be, you know, be in trouble if were trying to follow that because I don't know anything about it. And it doesn't really make sense to me in some ways either because I, I just don't hear it. Right. The way people hear it. And I can tell you the fans don't want you to change anything, no, man. Just continue doing what no. you're doing, brother. I don't know how to, you know. <laughs> Personally, I'm pushing. When I go in and sing the record, I, I mean, I'm, I'm hauling ass hard. I mean, I, I push hard on these songs. It's not like I'm just laying back. Right, so. putting everything into it. Now, uh, yeah. I know you got to get going, so just one more quick question. Anthrax, you guys are going back out on the road in August, I think? Uh, yeah, we have some one-offs. Uh, we, have, we have quite a few one-offs, and we're gonna, there'll be some announcements for some, a little another run that we're going to do. Uh, we got motorboat coming, and then we'll go to Europe to the tour. Ball. That's amazing, man. Well, I, I uh, again, uh, I just want to thank you for your time, and, and we appreciate talking yeah, to definitely. you. I, I want to be mindful of your time as well, so uh, we're, we're going to let you go. Thank you, man. You guys are awesome. Awesome. Thanks, thank you, man. Joe. Thank You're thank awesome you as always. And appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Keep in touch, brother. I'll talk to you sometime soon. Take care. Sure, anytime, man. I'll see you guys on the road. Def- yeah, we'll definitely come check you out, Joey. Sure, thank you. All right, man. Take care, brother. Somewhat Legendary Podcast. Okay, so everything that I've heard about Joey Belladonna, first of all, has been super positive. Yes. And is has just been validated. Yeah. It, it's been correct. What an awesome dude. Yeah, what an awesome dude. I was in a bar, <laughs> I didn't realize this, uh, I was in a bar band years ago, we did covers, and I actually named it after him, I named it Belladonna. And then he comes along and names his band Belladonna too, <laughs> so good thing we're not performing at the same time or we would have had to change our name. I obviously. was going to bring it up to him. But I'm glad respect, you didn't tell him. But I didn't. But I'm, I didn't. I'm glad you didn't tell him. I don't want him getting mad at me. 
But uh, yeah, obviously in no way can we compete with uh, Be- actually Joey Belladonna's band called. <laughs> uh, which well, which is a great band by the way. Although as cool as he is, he'd probably be like roll with it, man. Yeah, he probably would. Uh, that's the kind of that's my kind of guy right there. Yeah. Um, that guy is a singer in one of the biggest bands ever. Ever. Uh, it, it's it's metal, so it's a bit niche. But you know, twenty years from now, you'll say Anthrax, and people are going to think about Joey Belladonna. Um, and, and obviously Scott Ian and Charlie Benante and, and uh, Frankie Bell. I'm sorry, thank you, Frankie Bell. Sorry, Frankie. I, <laughs> I, I didn't forget you. your name; just slipped my mind there. And maybe maybe Danny Spitz and um, and Dan Loker. But that band will live forever. That's an immortal band. You can't. We the talk right about band at the right time period during it was just the right era for that band to just kick butt. Literally. You're right, and the right players all coming yep. that's what's beautiful about a band to find people with that kind of chemistry you you take and talent right exactly i mean you, you take those guys and the rhythms that they're coming up with they just it just makes you want to dance in a very aggressive way we call it dancing some people might call it moshing <laughs> um caught in a mosh caught in a mosh not uh no but uh so it just it it you add that you have that power it's almost like ice hockey mm-hmm. you have that power and that aggression and then you take Literally, the beauty of Joey Belladonna's voice. He's got an amazing voice. Like, he could sing opera. I was so surprised when he said he had no yeah, vocal tree. Blew me away. Who rolls out of bed and can sing like that in the morning? Um, He's like, yeah, I just sang in my room. I got, <laughs> no. Guess I got good at it. I don't know. It's like, yeah, you're pretty freaking good at it. And and I know that, that Joey Belladonna and, and Anthrax has influenced a ton of bands. I know there's a lot of people that try and sound like Joey. There's literally no one that sounds anywhere near him. No. There's people that have that style. But no one, you know his voice. When you hear his voice, you know it's Joey Belladonna. And he's a super cool guy, super down to earth. And I, we always look for guys and we talk about people that are humble. And it's easy to be humble when you're, you or I, when yeah. nobody knows who when we are. When you're really nothing. <laughs> right, when, you, when you're nothing. But to not get a big head after the years of playing, literally in front of one show playing in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Yep. If we were to do a show in front of hundreds of thousands of people, which we're getting there, we have 95,000 listeners now. Thank you very much, Thank guys. Thank you. We love you. But to one show to play in front of over 100,000 people, some of the festivals that they've played, uh, I mean, it's just, it, it could make you a cocky person, but he's humble. He's very humble. After, I mean, after the interview ended, we ended up just talking on the phone for a couple more minutes afterwards, just hanging out, talking, talking old shows, talking different things and it was just uh, it was amazing right and he's got a show tonight with his cover band and he's still like by all rights he just sort of hung up the phone and been like all right these dorks <laughs> but yeah no, we talked about the weather and where his show was and everything i don't know it was just it was awesome yeah if i if i have a show tonight for my band i'm not talking on the phone to anyone i'm focusing on that not that he's not focused obviously he is but i'm just saying that's how gracious he was to give us some time when he's got uh that kind of show coming up we can't. I mean, we can't thank him enough for calling in, coming on the show. Uh, it's just, it's truly an honor for Irish J and myself to get some of these, some of these guys that we grew up with and we grew up came, idolizing, idolizing, yeah. came to love them. Mm-hmm. Joey and we can't forget about Spike from right, DRI, Spike, thank Max, you, yeah. Max Cavalier, yep. The plethora of bands he's been in, Dan Severin, we love, amazing dude, Rowdy we, Piper. Oh my God, yeah. And there's, I mean, there's a ton of other, there's a slew of other people we could mention. What these guys, I hope that they realize is that they're more than, sometimes people say I'm just an entertainer. Well, you're more than that. You're a connection. Yep. Uh, A connection to a time period where things were awesome. Who doesn't hear a song and think about that time period in their life, and then they think about who they were hanging out with, who they were associated with, what was going going on in their family at that time? I mean, and I'm sure some people don't, but... You're weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree. It was just, it was amazing. And, and I want to thank Joey again. And uh, we're going to send you some merch, Joey. Definitely. And, uh, you know, if, and as far as the fans out there go, support Joey Belladonna. He's a great guy. Um, and I, we said it, Anthrax is an Anthrax without Joey Belladonna. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. Super talented. They write some great riffs, some great rhythms. Charlie and, and, and Scott and, and Frank here are some of the best players that you'll ever find ever i mean there'll never be guys like that that write just the heavy but yet still with that groove and aggressive yeah and, it just yeah. it just throws you into a mode it's not anthrax without joey belladonna and i would say that to anyone that should be on a shirt yeah it should, it be. should be on a shirt and should have a picture of joey belladonna 
Naked? No, probably not naked. Okay, not naked. <laughs> but just Joey Belladonna, you know? <laughs> so, and it just just support him. Uh, his cover band is called Chief Big Way. Support Belladonna, which is a project that he was working on. Kind of reminded me of, uh, musically, a little bit Alice in Chains, kind of just kind of more straightforward kind of rock um, than the thrashiness of Anthrax. But, it, you know, his, his vocals are just undeniable. And if you want to hear his vocals, listen to anything he does. Yep. It stands out. Total legend. Total yeah, legend. Total legend. Total legend. We are honored. We are blessed. And uh, we just want to thank you, our listeners. And we want to thank our guests. Everyone we've talked to has been Everybody. super nice, super, super gracious, and just amazing. So, for Prince Evan. And Irish J. Swindle. Stay cold. Stay thirsty. Thirsty. <laughs> <laughs>